afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike. We are now three on the set and our guest has joined us in the name of Michala Baraza. She's a bodybuilding athlete and we're going to speak about the development of bodybuilding as a sport. It was in the knowledge of public domain some time back, but it is standards dwindled in between. I don't know what happened. Of course, we will be getting into that to see what happened and going forward, what is the expectation like in terms of revival of the sport that, you know, a few people are passionate about. Good to see you. Christine. <laughs> Lovely to see me, Celestine, but okay. Celestine. Oh my goodness. Because I'm getting problems, you know, pronouncing Michala. Michala Barasa. Yes. I, I I actually quite like Michala Barasa. It's, it's a good name. Yes. A very beautiful one. Thank you. How is it like outside there though? <sighs> Bodybuilding wise? Yes. It's tough. It's extremely, extremely tough. We just completed our last tournament of the year last Friday. It was supposed to be held on Saturday. But turns out with the presidential address, we couldn't hold it on Saturday. So it was rushed and we did it on Friday evening. It was, by the standards, it was a success. Like we did our best. It's called the annual Kamukunji, Kamukunji annual talent search. It's uh, done by this bodybuilder called Chris 3 in 1, Christopher Okech. He's um, the world's strongest man in Dubai oh. and Kenya. And he's also um, a bodybuilder who's performed very well in the International Natural Bodybuilding Association competitions. How was the talent, uh, talent search? Did you get, you know, a few people, you know, uh, the upcoming potential? Definitely, definitely. It was very, it was very beautiful. Like it was a lot of talent considering the short time span and uh, considering the pandemic times. The guy that won is, I think, 26, a 26 year old guy and he packs a lot of muscle for his age and for his physique. He's, I think, at most five foot seven and is in the 90 kgs it's he's very, very i wish i could show you a picture <laughs> he's actually very big and you very show me good a picture when you're off the set yes so i know ken is wondering because bodybuilding is not a sport meant for uh, there is a perception that it's a sport meant for men mm -hmm. uh, you sought to demystify this myth by joining the sport what was the driving factor what's the inspiration behind you uh, starting to love bodybuilding as a sport. So this is a question for Ken. <laughs> not not <laughs> maybe we read from the same script, but <laughs> okay. It's a. It's, I, I I come from. I, I always come from a place of what is it that I cannot do? Like the human body for me is limitless. So you cannot just tell me. Um, by the way, I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya by, by profession. So I'm what you guys call a lawyer. Those are two very different things. But that's a story for another day. Um, <laughs> And most of the time, they'll tell you a lawyer cannot do A, B, C, D. Yeah, a lawyer cannot be seen walking on stage in what is most likely just their underwear. And for me, that, that was actually one of the, the, the motivating factors. I was like, no, you can do whatever you want. You can be whoever you want to be. But um, the fact that it's a very masculine sport, it's really not about... Um, it's just how we've been conditioned to think. Because women are a bit scared. They're a bit scared to get on stage in their underwear. But when you think about it, it's, there's nothing big to it. My inspiration has always been what a man can do, a woman can do better. And what is it that I cannot do? But there's, there's a lot of things that women can't do or I can't do as a person. But if there's something that I can put my foot out there and try my hand in, I will always try and poke that hole as long as it's of, it's of interest to me. Okay. Yeah, uh, my question to you would be, you said you are a, a lawyer or advocate, you? and you're also into bodybuilding, and both of these things require complete immersion, like into the trade, you know, law is very serious, and bodybuilding, uh, to follow a routine daily is very serious, so uh, sometimes do you, like, have to pick one of the two, and uh, if you have to pick one, which one would you say, like, this is my go-to thing, if it's law or bodybuilding? So let's start by saying law pays my bills. Law enables, <laughs> enables me to do bodybuilding. <laughs> so any day, any time. I'm sorry, bodybuilding community, but any day, any time, my fallback would always be the law. Uh -huh. But that being said, also, um, you being in sports and uh, you being a, a player, as he has said, yeah. you know um, training maybe is two, three hours a day. Yeah. You're up 12, 13 hours a day. The rest of those hours, I'm doing my law thing. I'm mm -hmm. doing whatever my side hustle is. Mm -hmm. Because bodybuilding does not take your whole day. And that's the other 
misconception people have that you'll be ev- the whole day in the gym no you it's not humanly possible for me mm. to be the whole day in the gym right. but it's possible for me to take two hours out of my day um the, the maybe one hour that my friends go out drinking and the other one hour that they spend in bed yeah I take that one hour for the bed and the one hour for drinking and I immerse it into something that I love. Ah, and yeah. that's how I balance the two. Oh, okay. yeah. So you don't drink? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one, oh, 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 you won't disclose publicly. No. We'll talk, <laughs> talk about it. When we'll talk <laughs> about it uh, off the set. So how has it been like in terms of the experience and journey since you joined this sport? that needs unrelenting commitment and in terms of journey, the experience, has it been very difficult, the challenges you've come across and even, you know, the beauty about it? When, when I started, I really struggled. I really struggled with the balance. Um, and I also, I also really struggled with where I draw the line um, of what people say and who's going to give me support. And initially when I said bodybuilding, I never used to put, I would never, I would never have come to this platform and told you I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. That was always out of the question. So I used to treat them as two complete opposites. And that's one thing I struggled with for two, three years. Then after I gelled into it and the legal community started being accepting towards my bodybuilding journey because I'd been consistent, it became easier. Um, Commitment-wise, I will not say the, the struggle was too much because it's something that I've actually liked doing. And um, the beauty of the journey is actually what we were just talking about with yes. you before I came on set, um, the competition in India. So I go to this competition. I am the only person with black skin and tough hair in the whole room. Everyone else is light, white, and like the, even the, the dark Indians are not, they don't have this kind of skin. Uh, but... You get on stage and you do your thing because you're given one minute. I did my one minute. I did my posing. I had practiced. I had dieted. I had gotten my suit. I had gotten my shoes. um, And I came in second, which was a very big deal for me, a very big deal for my gym, and actually a very big deal for Kenya. If you're listening to this, Amina Mohammed, it was a very big deal for Kenya. Um, And I feel that is one of my highest moments in bodybuilding. Because it was something that I did for myself, for my gym, and for my country. Like it was, it was good. So after girl and show overseas in India during, you know, the international competition where you say you are, the probably the only African who was <laughs> taking part in the competition. <laughs> do you f- feel? Did you f- feel appreciated having back the medal? Of course, emerging second overall. By the country? Yes. No. By my gym, very much. And why not? by the country um because you s- did, did you you know me from from social media so yes, i'll not ask yeah. you did you know i had a, a silver medal in india i uh, know exactly yeah <laughs> that's exactly why like there's a very small crop of people that one know about bodybuilding two know about women in bodybuilding and three know about even the international competitions that bodybuilders go to so it's i guess it's just what it is for a lot of women in sports it's just that's just what it is um we want better we hope our sports ministry does better but no i did not feel by the country no by my gym by the pole in bodybuilding very much very much appreciated good and uh the question is uh has there ever been a, a private person who's like walked in and said uh, i'm going to support something between all the gyms or it's just uh, every time there's a competition, uh, you guys look to the government or is there a private body or investor who does, who shakes things and makes these things happen? Aha. Uh-huh. So that is the question I was actually waiting for. Um, for me, all the competitions that I've gone to have been supported by my coach in my gym. Hmm. So uh, my gym is called Ultra Fitness Gym. It's in Kilimani. Any time I go for a competition anywhere, be it local, be it international, they'll brand me, they'll pay for my ticket, they'll pay for my supplements, they'll pay for my training. Like, they'll make sure I actually go out there and do my thing. And it's like that with a lot of bodybuilders. Yeah. Um, the competition that we just completed in Kamukunji, the guy is sponsoring six athletes, I believe, to go and compete in Romania. And um, this is one of those things that I wish and I feel that the sports ministry should be looking at and saying, actually, these people are going for an international natural bodybuilding competition because there's a lot of issues around doping in bodybuilding. And probably that's one of the reasons why uh, the sports ministry might not want to associate itself with a lot of bodybuilding. But this person is taking people to a natural, it's actually called the International Natural Bodybuilding Association. 
So this is where they, they can come in and they can actually help Chris with some of the sponsorship for this um, athletes. There has been a concern over existence of briefcase federations in the country. Um, lack of activity has been witnessed from Kenya Bodybuilding Federation. I don't know where you sit objectively speaking as a player. Do you think much has been done in terms of even enlightenment, putting in place structures, policies to ensure that you know these sports grows from where it, it is right now to another level? Um, not to rain on my federations parade, but I think we at the moment might be might be the sport with the laziest federation. And I say this with a lot of pain, but also a lot of love, because I know, I I see the heart and commitment that bodybuilders put into co into training for a competition. If we took even just half of that into building what kind of federation we want, we'd have an amazing federation. Because uh, when you look at it objectively, the, the way you're putting it, in 2018 is the last time we had an international Mr. and Miss Kenya um, bodybuilding competition, which again is a title I still hold to date. Um, so people that held that ti those titles in 2018, those titles have not been challenged. So if you ask who is Miss Kenya bikini right now, they'll tell you Mihala is. Simply because in 2019 and 2020, there were no competitions. And in 2021, it's looking like there's not going to be another competition. So we have to wait and see who will come up and say, oh, well, I want to run for the federation elections and, you know, be the chair and probably um, do another competition, which, which, in my opinion, will be another two or three years. I don't see it even happening in 2022, honestly. I see it starting from maybe 2023 onwards. Maybe as players, do you think you should take the challenge in your hands and uh, vie for these positions, rise to the mantle, be in charge, and do whatever you want to wish? You want uh, it done for the sake of the growth of the sport? I feel like that's a very small percentage of players because um, when you look at it, and Ken will agree with me on this, I hope, um, a very small percentage of players want to actually be involved in the politics. You just want to go to to the field or to the stage and just play and just do your craft and just be the best at what you do. Unless the time has come for you to exit the sport and actually take a more active role in the leadership, you just you just want to play. And if you're being a leader, you try and, like me, I try to be a quote-unquote leader from just being a bikini athlete that I let the bikini athletes that are coming up look up to me. I help them with one, two, three things. But I'm not running to be the chair of the federation tomorrow, honestly, because I still want to play this sport. Yeah. Of course, we're talking to Mihala Baraza, the bodybuilding athlete, talking about the development of the sport in the country. She's also an advocate of the high court, and she's put things into perspective, saying that there's a difference between being a lawyer and an advocate of the high court. And it looks like she was addressing me because I've been misusing the two. Thanks for coming through in terms yes, of that work. rectification. <laughs> and of course, she spoke very well with regards to how she's been juggling between the two good questions from Ken and multitasking. She says, hasn't been that a concern, uh, uh, of course, between law and between the sport she loves. Now, let's talk about, you know, the way forward of this sport, even Olympics is around the corner. We've seen how, you know, those perceived to be small sporting disciplines are preparing. We've seen even badminton guys uh, preparing to go to Tokyo, Japan, to take part in this global sporting extravaganza. Do you think if there were concrete uh, association in place locally, bodybuilding would also be uh, taking part in the qualifiers for Tokyo? So um, I'm not sure bodybuilding features in Tokyo, there's, but there's a, an Oli our Olympics is called Mr. and Miss Olympia. Um, so I feel, I feel like if we had a solid federation, solid federation that would help us get points, because our, our, I think it's like, just like any other sport. Yes. It's point-based. The more points you have, the easier it is for you to be able to qualify for Olympia. I think we would get there, because when you look at it uh, in retrospect, we have had bodybuilding athletes like Rashid Gift Issa, um, Evelyn Okini Oala, Mesha Koching, Shital Kotak, Farah Ismail that have actually gone out and performed exceptionally well in bodybuilding um, events, different bodybuilding events around the world. So if you put all of these athletes together and say, well, we want, we want to have a team of, say, 10 athletes to take to the Olympia. If we had a solid federation, yes, we would actually be preparing for something close. Even if it's not Olympia, something very close to it this year. Okay. Ken, 
Yeah. Are you seeking joining bodybuilding? Because she said age is not a factor and anyone can enroll even uh, at 40. But uh, you are too young and in your <laughs> early 20s. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I don't think I'd, I'd join bodybuilding, but I do work out. Uh, yeah, bodybuilding is something really serious, yeah? proper immersion. But uh, I had a question, like you said, there is the federation is defunct. It's not working. It's not there. Uh, does that mean that are there lesser gyms who are willing to step up and hold these competitions or uh, there are a lot of gyms and which are, apart from your gym which other which other gyms are really stand uh, really stand out when it comes to competitions and stuff so my gym does not my gym is in fact exclusively a boxing gym hmm. so they um the good thing that they did is they, they we have two bodybuilding athletes myself and some the current mr kenya physique hmm. But there's different gyms that are actually very willing to support and bring up uh, talent in bodybuilding. There's a gym in Italy called Fitness Empire. Um, you'd be surprised, eh? Yeah, it's yes. actually a gym in Italy that yeah. is very big on bodybuilding. It hosts the two-time Mr. Kenya, Rashid Gift Isa. There's a gym called Hood Gym, and that's all the way in Kawangware that also really supports bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, there's Colosseum Fitness Center that is the gym that my mentor goes to. That is also another gym that supports bodybuilding. In terms of them coming together to hold a competition, that's something I, I'm not sure they've ever considered. Mm. I'm not sure they'd be closed to it, but it's not. I, I don't. I, I'm not. I've not seen them consider it in the past before. Oh. Yeah. So bodybuilding is classified under you know fitness sports, and there are plenty boxing, wrestling. I don't know what's the relationship. What's the similarity and <laughs> and uh, you know compare and contrast. For, for someone who is a boxer, can they, you know, comfortably become bodybuilders or well, for wrestlers? Well, I think for anyone that has been that has played a sport before, it might be easier for them when they join bodybuilding because you already know the commitment and the discipline that goes with it. That being said, also, um, I think another thing I have appreciated about bodybuilding and which is similar to every other sport is is you get to do the same thing over and over every day like it's monotonous yeah. but it's structured so i feel like most w the the relationship comes in the commitment and the discipline that comes with it the difference comes with the skill because they say bodybuilders are very stiff so i'm not sure if, <laughs> if is it true I, I, I don't think so <laughs> i think i move quite well but you know um the skill is the difference, but the discipline, heart, and commitment is where the similarity is at. How many people you've enrolled yourself uh, after talking to them, especially for ladies who think that probably this sport is not meant for us, and you've spoken to them or they have watched you in the gym practicing and playing even overseas? Have you managed to lure a few? I think I could say they, maybe five or so. But the one that I have actually gone through the journey with uh, and taken her up to the stage with me is one. And that was in 2018. And that was a very proud moment for me, standing next, to stage, next on stage with someone that I have actually mentored and trained with for 12 to 16 weeks. It was a very uh, proud moment for me. Oh, and she was 39 at that time. So Yeah, OK. Yes. <laughs> And now on that note, let's just take a short commercial break. It's 2 p.m. Then we will be back to continue with, you know, development of bodybuilding as a sport in the country. Don't go away. <laughs> 